very welcome with us today again uh, just for our Sunday mini service and uh, as you know we're beginning to work our way through Ephesians chapter 6 and that whole passage that speaks about the armour of God. Uh, but I want to say thank you to the praise team uh, who have just been busy up at church uh, one night organising and being able to play some, some songs that we can use in our Sunday services. And we've just sung Emmanuel, God is with us, precious Redeemer, living word. And just that lovely, the Christmas theme that's true all year round, Emmanuel, God by his presence, by his spirit, is with us. And it's a message we need in these times, is it not? So thank you so much to, to all who helped there with the praise and will help us during uh, today's service as well. Can I, a wee reminder as well just about Kids Corner and thank you to all who are helping out with that especially with the stories and uh, with Sophie and with Leah and Diane kind of leading and with the actions it's just great and again please 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 uh, send in your pictures your little videos uh, that, that we can kind of keep a two-way contact going there with Kids Corner. Uh, thank you so much uh, just for everyone helping with that. Also just today again it's with sympathy uh, and our condolences that we, we share our sympathy with the Stevenson family uh, with Beth and the whole family circle in the loss of Roy uh, this week past and again we'll pray for the family later on in our time of worship together. As I say we've been working through Ephesians chapter 6 and uh, I'm going to look today just really at verse 13 in that passage, but just to give it a greater context and we'll pick up as we think later. I want to read from Matthew chapter 4 and the passage about the temptation of Jesus, Jesus being led uh, into the wilderness. So let me read please just from Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him and the angels came and attended Jesus. Amen. Karen is just going to lead us in prayer now, so we'll just hand over to Karen. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, you are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You are Creator and Sustainer. You are Sovereign over all. You alone are worthy of our worship, the one to whom all glory and honour and power and praise are due. Lord, as we bow before you now, we ask that you would open our hearts, minds, eyes and ears to see a glimpse of your majesty and authority, your splendour and holiness. And as you do so, we cry out like Isaiah and Peter, that we are undone, for we see our sinfulness and our unworthiness, our unfaithful hearts, 
our lustful eyes, our unclean lips, selfish thoughts and our harmful actions. And we fall on your mercy and ask forgiveness for our sins, knowing your promise that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, God, for your cleansing. Renew a right spirit within us that we may be spurred on to live in obedience to your word. Although we are not yet meeting together physically in our buildings, remind us that we are part of the family of God. Help us to love one another, care for one another, encourage one another and build one another up in the faith. As we continue to think about the spiritual battle we are engaged in, we thank you for the armour you have provided to enable us to stand firm in our struggle. Be with Gordy as he opens your word and shares with us the truths and lessons that you have laid on his heart. We ask that you would speak to us, that we would listen to you, and maybe be prepared to obey your instructions to us. And we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name and for your glory. Amen. And now we're going to sing together that beautiful Getty song, Oh How Good It Is.
read earlier in Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11 about the temptation of Jesus and what I want to do today, I suppose I hoped today that we would maybe jump straight into looking at the armour uh, mentioned here in Ephesians 6. But as I looked at the passage again, just verse 13 just really jumped out at me and, and we thought last week in a broad sweep of the passage about the enemy, about the equipment and about the energy, about the enemy, Satan himself, our battle not against flesh and blood, the equipment, the armour of God and then the energy, pray in the spirit on all occasions. And just as I was looking, thinking about this week, um, verse 13 just simply says, therefore, because of all of this, you know what we've talked about, when you see the therefore, you ask, what's it there for? Well, because of all of this, because our battle is not against flesh and blood, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. And then start of verse 14, stand firm then with the belt of truth. And so the passage goes on about the armour. But the word that just keeps jumping out in that passage, maybe you've got it, is stand. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones has a whole big, huge commentary all on the armour of God. And let me just read you one of the passages, one of the little sections that he wrote. We must think of ourselves as troops, as soldiers, as people in the army of the living God. What a difference it would make to the Christian church if she view viewed herself in this manner. The world outside is not interested in Christianity, for it thinks that it's something sentimental, sloppy and spineless. If you're in our house with some of the young, our young ones, they would just say, Ooh, burn. For the world outside thinks that Christianity is something sentimental, sloppy and spineless. And here Paul encourages the church to stand. So let's jump into just verse 13 today and pick it apart and see what we can learn from these words in scripture. So put on the full armour of God. We read at the start of verse 13. We also read that in verse 11. If you like, suit up. Put on the personal protection equipment. Or if you're a fireman, or if you're on the farm, or if you're playing football, you wear the equipment that's appropriate for the task at hand. Richard Cokin, um, another little study book I looked at, says this, the armour is illustrated here with the complete kit of the heavenly armed Roman foot soldier. So the equipment here is for the heavenly armed, heavily armed Roman foot soldier. This is not sugary sweet, sing songs on Sunday kind of Christianity. This is earthy foot soldier stuff. This is foot soldier combat. This is rank and file. I think if you watch some of those American uh, army movies, sometimes they, they call the soldiers the grunts. They're just the everyday, get the job done people, working hard. And the armour that Paul is looking at is the everyday armour of the rank and file Roman soldier. Again, Richard Cokin says, to put on the full armour of God is to resist the lies of Satan with our gospel convictions about the person, life, death, resurrection and reign of Christ Jesus. Let's put on the full armour of God for the spiritual struggle that we live in day and daily. We need to suit up and wear the equipment that's been given to us for the task at hand. That task is the spiritual struggle. Put on the full armour of God, the verse continues, for when the day, or so that when the day of evil comes, when the day of evil comes, 
Again, Cokin says, we need to understand spiritual warfare from a biblical perspective. Again, in Ephesians 6, and those verses at the very beginning of the passage. Verse 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. It's a spiritual struggle. And so how do we understand that from a biblical perspective? I think the easiest way to, to figure that through is to go right back to Genesis, to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through to 19. How did Satan work in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve? Well, how he worked was really simple. Doubt. Did God really say? Deception. Adam and Eve, no, eat the fruit. You will not surely die. Desire. <laughs> if you take this, you will be like God. Ooh, let's go after this. They saw the fruit. It was desirable to the eye. And then what happened was the vision. When God came to walk in the garden with Adam and Eve, their shame and guilt made them hide from God. And, and the Lord, the God, God is walking in the garden saying, Adam, where are you? I desire to be with you in relationship. But also, and subtly you miss it in this passage, but it brought death. To the dust of the earth you will return. And from we understand that Adam and Eve had this perfect relationship with God in the garden, which would last forever. But death came because of disobedience. And Satan's strategy and his tactics were to sow doubt, to lie and deceive deception, and to actually go after the desires of man. Think, as we've read in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, and Jesus being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Doubt. If you are the Son of God, then. I think twice we read that in the passage. Deception. This is brilliant. <laughs> Satan quotes scripture, or misquotes scripture, to Jesus. Sure, he will command his angels to keep guard over you. Deception. Satan, the king of twists, as we talked about last week. Desire. Turn these stones into bread. Sure, you're hungry. Use your power for whatever you want. And also, all these kingdoms of the world I will give you. If you'll just bow down and follow me. Doubt, deception, desire. Again, Satan is determined because that passage finishes with Satan leaving. But in Luke chapter 4 verse 13, Satan says, When the devil had finished all this tempting... He left Jesus until an opportune time. He is determined. But look at the defense of Jesus in this passage. Jesus answered, it is written. It is also written. Three times, Jesus just quotes scripture at Satan. Jesus' strategy was to stand on the truth. For you and I, folks, it's just the same today. I was reading him a little devotional notes during the week and Jeff Lucas was talking about, about friends, people he had known over years who had just made terrible mistakes and, and drifted from faith. And he says this of them, Mugged by the temporary insanity of strong temptation, they ignored their conscience, they ignored what they knew of scripture and even the pleading of friends. And their life became a car crash. You get that mugged by the temporary insanity of strong temptation. Friends, this is our struggle every day. This is the spiritual struggle that we are in, that we need to suit up against. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, that the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. We read that in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. What is Satan's strategy? Doubt. To make us question faith. To make us question the truth of scripture. Deception. He will lie to us at every turn. As John says, he's a liar and the father of lies. 
And he'll go after our desires, those things each of us have an Achilles heel. And Satan will twist as much as he can. Think of Jesus in the wilderness. Satan came after 40 days and 40 nights and when he was hungry, when he was at his weakest. He will do the same with you and I. This is our spiritual struggle. When the day of evil comes. And we live constantly in this spiritual struggle. We live in a world now that's turning its back on the things of God. With the subtlety of advertisements on TV which are just becoming so immoral in many ways. And the things that we're being pushed to. The change in moral values in our society. We're now a secular country and not a Christian country. The subtle adjustment of truth to suit desires. What is it again? Doubt, deception, desires. These are the strategies of, Jesus, of, of Satan. J.B. Phillips in this passage in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 puts it like this. The spirit of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe and prevents the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, the image of God, from shining on them. The world's eyes have been blinded to the truth of God. And you and I are the foot soldiers to take that message uh, to the world. And the last little section we want to think about is to stand strong. To stand strong. Paul writes, So that you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand Verse 14, stand firm then. Verse 10 in the passage, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Verse 11, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. This word stand is so important. I always read verse 13. I'm not even sure, quite sure how to read it. But that so that you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, comma, to stand and then stand strong then so paul is writing here folks in this spiritual struggle we need to stand strong matthew hoskinson in another little book that i read says we win holding our ground and refusing to give in to temptation or to disbelief we win by holding our ground stand strong and refusing to give in to temptation and disbelief. Well, I don't know about you, but that's me every day of the week. Every day of the week, in the spiritual struggle to stand strong, needing to be reminded to suit up for the battle. We read last week in 1 Peter 4 and 12, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. And uh, again, um, oh, what do you call him? Um, Martin Lloyd-Jones says, you know, the devil can roar, but he can't touch us. <laughs> I think that's quite nice. The devil can roar, but he can't touch us. But your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. And the passage in Peter goes on to say, Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Resist him, standing firm, stand strong in the faith. Martin Lloyd-Jones picks up, well, there's five little things. I want to pick up three of them. He says, in this spiritual struggle, and we're standing strong, first of all, don't be shocked by the fact that there is a struggle. Second Timothy 2, verse 3, Paul writes, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ. Don't be surprised. As a good soldier of Christ, we're in a battle. So endure hardship. Don't be shocked. This is the world we live in. Also, and this passage in Timothy follows on there, not just don't be shocked, don't be shoddy. Don't be a shoddy, sloppy soldier. No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. And for you and I, following Jesus, our commanding officer is the Lord. And so let's not be shoddy or sloppy in how we serve him. For no one serving as a soldier in the army of the Lord gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. So two things there. Don't be shoddy or sloppy in our beliefs. We need to know the word of God. 
just as Jesus handled it against Satan. But also don't be shoddy or sloppy in your behaviour. If you love Jesus, you're to live in a way that honours him and serves him. That again is part of our struggle every day because our desires and our doubts and the deception of Satan can take us away. But let's work hard at not being shocked that we're in a battle, not being shoddy in how we live for Jesus, for our commanding officer, and then don't be scared. The one who is in you, says John, is greater than the one that is in the world. Again, as Lloyd-Jones writes, the devil can roar, but he can't touch us. Again, Lloyd-Jones says, the Christian is at one and the same time, or the, Chris, uh, the Christian at one and the same time realises how terribly weak he is and yet how tremendously strong he is. And I think, I don't know about you, but I just waver between the two. The Christian at one and the same time realises how terribly weak he is and yet how tremendously strong he is. And he goes on to say we must think of ourselves as troops, as soldiers, as people in the army of the living God. That's where we started. We must think of ourselves as troops, as soldiers, as people in the army of the living God. Aware of the enemy, wearing the equipment and empowered by the energy of prayer as we suit up for the spiritual struggle and as we stand strong to serve our Lord Jesus. Again, folks, we're going to take a few moments to sing Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Often a praise that we sing at the beginning of a service, but we sing in one of the verses, Be Still for the Power of the Lord is Moving in this place, but in your life and in my life. So let's just, maybe as we respond, are we wearing the armour? Are we suited up? Are we aware of the spiritual struggle? Because the day of evil will come has come, is coming, is there around us every day. Stand strong, that you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand, stand firm then. And for the next three weeks, we'll just consider the different parts, different six little sections of the armour of God that we're to wear, but again empowered by the energy of prayer. So be still for the power of the Lord is moving.
So with those words and thoughts ringing in our ears, let's bow together in prayer, please. Lord God, in these days we ask that you would continue to give us strength to stand for you, to put on the armour that you provide, that you give your people, and empower us to stand in the spiritual struggle that we all face day and daily. Lord, in these days, we are nervous and fearful. Doubts and anxiety cause us to stumble. But help us, Lord, to be still, to know that you are God and that you are in charge and there is nothing to fear when you are with us. We pray today, Lord, for the Stevenson family, that they may continue to know your presence as they walk in the darkest valley of Roy's death. We ask, Lord God, that Beth and the whole family circle may know a deep sense of your presence dwelling with them at this time. And we continue also, Lord, to commit to you all who have lost loved ones in recent days. Hear our prayers, Lord. As, a, as society begins to open up again, Lord, after the restrictions of lockdown, we want to pray for wisdom and good sense to prevail in our community. We ask for businesses trying to reopen, that you would help them in every way, practically, emotionally and mentally, as they navigate the stress and strain of a new normal and their concern to be profitable and also to care for their staff and for customers. Please guide and give wisdom, Lord, to our leaders who are making important decisions to navigate a way for society to open up as much as possible and yet still continue to be safe. We ask also, Lord God, that the summer period will bring much needed rest, renewal and relaxation to a society that has suffered stress and been stretched by the circumstances of the past four months as we nervously anticipate the future. Lord God, hear our prayers. And as we share the benediction together, I pray words from 1 Corinthians 15. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labour is not in vain. Amen. Amen. Folks, again, as we say, can we say, keep safe, keep in touch, and as you stand strong, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen.